Hey, I'm Tim Burnett, and this is the Solo Hunter Podcast. We're all about hunting good, eating good, and downright rugged individualism. This is podcast episode number seven, hanging out with Remy Warren. You gotta have a story. No, forget the story. Everybody's doing something. We'll do nothing. They say, what's your show about? I say nothing. There you go. It's about nothing. I think you may have something here. Do you know what we're going to do? What's that? On this podcast, do you know what we're doing? I don't. Do you? Not really. We can just make it up as we go along. Yeah. Well, we made up the first five or six podcasts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we get professional. Yeah. We have transformed from lavalier mics to headphone mics. Yeah. Um, and there's a reason. Because the quality is just that much better. Yeah. Now maybe my chest hairs will grow back so I can because I can quit taping the lavalier mic to my chest. Exactly. Since I just it was broken. I I forget and leave them taped onto the shirt and then wash them. And <laughs> my problem is I'm tape. out in the woods and then nature calls and I'm like Whoosh, and it just takes my whole shirt with me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, we we've, we've uh, thanks to Remy, we've got a nice set headset. Yeah. Hopefully the audio is recording. It looks, uh, let me just double check. <laughs> yep, it's recording, and I can hear everything good. So luckily I had these uh, these nice headsets in storage. I've been doing a little bit of podcasting myself. Yeah, you um, have. So got the setup, and I think that it'll bring some quality to the old solo hunter. Whatever this is anything this. but purified water. Yeah, this is not. This we're we're testing out a new product. Oh, I left it over there. It's the Wilderness Athlete Paleo Ish. This looks like the crappy water that Green Tree's been drinking all week in Colorado. Oh, um, it's actually pretty good. I like. It's a little bit gritty, but if it's natural, then it's going to be gritty. It's not going to have. There's no artificial colors or flavors, and sweetened with pineapple. Yeah, you can actually taste like it's almost like dehydrated pineapple is all it is. So. I like it. I like gritty though. Do you know the um and this this was not meant to be turning into a any product push by any means, but I like the um the greens. I don't even know what they call it. The uh Vita probiotic green. or the No, it's just the mixed greens, whatever it is. Yeah, oh yeah, like the daily. It tastes kinda of like a tea. Yep. It's like a matcha. Yeah. I don't know. Tim doesn't even know what matcha is. I know what yerba mate <laughs> is, you know. Yeah. Or is that what it is? Maybe mate. I, I don't even know. You don't what even it know is. what it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, uh, um, but I like to drink it in hot because it's like a hot tea. Oh, you yeah. Know, nice herbal tea. Tastes good. That's a good idea. I've yeah. actually been trying to stop drinking so much coffee. Yeah. Well, you don't drink coffee, but right. um, I don't know. I just, it makes me jittery all day and yeah. I drink way too much coffee. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to just start drinking either tea or you know like for the caffeine stuff the wilderness athlete type yeah you know because i the caffeine helps especially when you're out hunting because you're getting up so early in the morning and then you just need that extra little boost because once you get fired up it's that i always say it's the first hill out of the truck or the first hill out of camp that's the one that is the hardest hill all day is the first one. And yeah. if you can just make that first one a little bit easier, once you get going, <laughs> it's not a big deal. But yeah. it's that first, it's like, oh, I got to roll out of bed. It's cold uh, and charge up a mountain or it's just you need a little bit of boost. I that's do. why you got to just lay in the bed till 10 o'clock yeah. until your body's all rejuvenated. You know, every nature has all happened. Like everything is clean. You're just nice and fresh. And you're like, yeah, I could do this now. That's and great. then you go hunt. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. Gentleman's hunt. <laughs> I need one of those except for I'm missing out on the lodge and the soft bed. I'm just like rolling out of the tent or out of the back of the truck and then just like, oh, I don't feel good this morning. I'm just yeah. going to wait. That's what I got. Um, oh, there's this. I got this tea in Alaska that I drank this morning. It was really good. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know. It's some blend that you can only get there, but. I think next time I go back in two weeks, I'm just going to stockpile for the year. You're going back in two weeks? Going back in two weeks. Really? I will be going on a uh, elk hunt with uh, Ranella for oh, a nice. uh, Meat Eaters episode. Nice. After me and Jason drew that tag. Um, actually, you probably can't even see it. That poster behind me is a picture from yeah. that hunt. Um, they, it got chosen. Uh, it was a cover shot, which was kind of cool. That's my brother Jason on there. That is it was awesome. just a cool, cool place. Um, and while we were on that hunt, that was one of those hunts that you're like, 
And while you're there, you're like, I'm never doing that again. And you get home, you're like, yo, let's do that again. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Renault was like, hey, you, uh, you want to put in for that hunt? I was like, nah, not really, but I will. <laughs> and then we drew it. So. <laughs> nice. You drew so, it as a party, so there's yeah, multiple party. guys up there uh, going. Just the t- there, you can only do party at two in Alaska. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. But um, we drew it as a party. And people, here's the thing. Alaska, people always say, oh, you got the tv host tag or what there yeah you get that, special that preferences that half the people that say that don't even apply for the same tag right so you know and and not only that they go oh the tv host tag well you can get a lot of these you can get registration tags for them so you could go there without drawing a tag yeah but i'm just i'm not even yeah. gonna get into it but well it's amazing how many times how many people ask that and it's mostly people outside of the hunting industry like that just don't know they're like well do you get special treatment for being a tv guy I'm like no it's the well, same as anybody and i've i've never got a special treatment tag but there are special treatment tags are there really are, i thought you got one no, not in I alaska have, no. no i've never got a special in colorado treatment tag. that was a landowner tag oh okay but it was like the guy that had the tag was head of the marketing agency that was that we were dealing with on a lot of the the uh, advertising okay. that we were gotcha. doing. And he had a tag left over, and he's like, hey, why don't you come and do this? We'll film some stuff. We did some stuff for Colorado Parks and Wildlife and, um, you know, kind of tied all that together. In fact, I think they provided the film permit for it. So oh, okay. Never it was like – it was one, yeah, that was, that was a special treatment tag, the special I guess. Tag. Yeah. yeah, but the thing is, is I've, I apply – Here's the funny part. If we're talk, if we're going to talk about tags for a few seconds, I have applied since I was, well, in Nevada, obviously, since I was 12 years old, in Montana, since I was 12 years old, and I think probably since I was 14 in Utah. So, and then most of the other states since I was 16 or older. Really? Okay. So, in in a lot of states, I have 16 points right. years of applying and this was just something when i was 16 years old i said i know that i really love to hunt and i took advantage of at the time there was you know reduced as it as uh you know under 18 you yeah. had a reduced price so i was like i'm just going to build points in all these states i literally put in for probably every state i even put in for vermont <laughs> for moose tags <laughs> i mean i put in for every tag you know how many out of state tags i've drawn not very many. Not really. very many. Yeah. Yet. I mean, yeah. you're, you're. I mean, but that's, it's, it's kind of like everyone's like, oh, you got to apply. And I, I honestly have not drawn that many out of state tags. Almost every hunt that I do is, uh, it just happens to be one that's either real easy to draw or almost guaranteed to draw. Right. Um, and then the stuff in Nevada, you know, that's, which is, I'm not putting in for crazy hard to draw tags. The premier units. Yeah. And stuff. I mean, yeah. some stuff I am. But if I look at it, it's like I have, I've drawn a few tags here and there, but you know, I've drawn a few in Alaska, but I always, I put in every year the maximum number of choices Mm -hmm. and my dad seems to draw more tags there than I do, but I am pretty lucky in that state. Whereas Idaho, I've put, put in for just as long and drawn zero tags. Right. Right. So, so maybe there is something, maybe there is. (laughs) Well, it's so, so like every year you're, you're destined to draw maybe one two if you're lucky right but you put in for so many different states that every year you get something good get something yeah and i mean yeah not even always something good but something something you know i think like this year i've got well i haven't even got them yet i haven't got my hopefully there's deer tags left for idaho uh i don't know i don't either i i I get mine early i don't know because remember last year we were going to go do that late hunt and they didn't they were sold out well, I had already had one tag though and filled it. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, I think last time I checked, there was twelve hundred tags or something like that left. Mm-hmm. We'll have to we'll have to look at it. But that's one thing that I didn't get in on that. I didn't get in on the tag game early on in my life, you know. So it, it's only been in the last five or six years that I've actually started putting in for other states. All the all the out of state stuff that I've been doing has been over the counter. Um, but. You know, I'm kind of at a stage in my life where my kids are still young, so I want to stay close to home. Yeah. But by the time I build up enough points to start drawing some of those those other states, yeah, I'm going to be a few years older, but I won't have the, you know, stewardships and I won't have to be home quite as much for them. They'll yeah. Be, they'll be out on their own, which is kind of scary to think about, but... Um, but it's a good way to plan it too. Yeah, it was my life plan. I didn't want to... I didn't... 
I didn't, it wasn't a priority to me early on. It just wasn't because yeah. I was doing enough over the counter hunts and doing just fine. But now I find myself getting a little bit more greedy where I'm like, yeah, I want to, I want a little better trophy class animal. I want to, uh, for me, it's like, I want to go on a destination hunt. I want to do some of the hunts that you're doing and, and be able to do those, but, um, all in good time, hopefully. See, now I have a friend, uh, Jeremy Rusink. It's actually, I'm, Surprise! I'm wearing a shirt right now. <laughs> <The> Rogue <laughs> not his shirt, but his company shirt. Um, and a while ago, I was like, "Yo, you know, are you putting in for tags?" This, that, and the other thing. He's, he says, "Yeah, I used to." And then I just completely gave up what? because I know how much I was spending per year. Yeah. And he thought I can just every five years just take that money and go on a really good hunt somewhere. And he does. And I think maybe that's the better strategy because <laughs> if you think about it, you are shelling out a lot of money for what amounts to a a lottery, a raffle that you, I feel like I've been in it long enough where now I can't give up, but is it the best way to go? I mean, the, all the information out there says, yeah, apply, apply, do this, do that. And it's been good for me, but on the flip side, I probably could have just taken that money and then just paid for an out of state hunt somewhere yeah. every five years. Yeah. Because but, you aren't drawing them that often yeah. every five years. A, yeah. a really good tag. We're just talking like trophy quality type hunts. But on the other side, you know, I may, I have drawn three sheep tags. Well, yeah, three sheep tags. So those are trips that I would never have been able to just save up the money and buy. Right. Problem is you start saving up the money and then the transmission blows or something exactly. happens and there goes the money. You yeah. Know? And it's a little bit easier when you're dedicating it specifically to that tag for the hope, you know, yeah. it's like, well, you could draw it this year. So then your investment into that hunt might've been a lot cheaper. Than, exactly. Yeah. My wife tells me all the time, or I kind of think too, it's, uh, you know, I'm in this business so that I can hunt a lot more, but maybe the, maybe the better route would have been to go to dental school or med school so that I could afford to go on bigger mm -hmm. hunts and I'd have more money at the end of the day. And I'd still have tons of free time, you know? Yeah. But it's I a lifestyle know. choice, I guess. It is. So. I mean, I couldn't do anything else I, to be able to just pick up and go hunting here, there, everywhere yeah. constantly is, is, I mean, that's my dream. Yeah. I think that's a lot of, that was always the drive for me was like, I wanted a lifestyle to be able to work for myself and make my own decisions. Freedom. You know, it's yeah. mostly about freedom. It's not about the amount of money you make. It's just flexibility and freedom. So I'm on call, you know, whenever somebody needs me at home or whenever there's a music program or a baseball game, most of the time, then I can be there. That's cool. Know, aside from hunting the season. So what do you want to jump Good. into? Should we talk about a couple of our recent hunts? Yeah. So you brought up Alaska. Let's jump into that. You just, you've been on two trips already in the last three weeks to Alaska. Yep. Or two trips in two weeks, pretty much. Well, we'll talk about the the first trip, the caribou trip. Okay. Um, and, you know, as I, I do the solo hunters, but then I also do a lot of other things. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a meat eaters episode. I'm going to be doing um, a uh, Under Armour Ridge Reaper episode, which is kind of more online stuff. Um, and so that hunt was with my dad. It's the same hunt that you saw on solo hunters was it two years ago now with your dad, that with my dad, that, that caribou hunt. Mm -hmm, right. And I thought, man, that was the coolest hunt ever. And I've never shot a caribou myself. I've been on caribou hunts with other people that had tags, but I've never been the guy with the tag in a good caribou area. So I was really excited about this hunt. I really wanted to do it with my bow and, and my dad, we put in as a party. So he had the tag as well. So I thought, okay, well, do I want to film it for solo? But you know, part of the, one of the hard things sometimes about solo hunters is the solo aspect. Not that it's hard to go out solo. We're just so used to it. Right. But to plan hunts when other people might be involved. And then how do you want to go about it. Do we want another episode where my dad's there, even though that was probably one of the best received those episodes are, we've ever done. Yeah. They're, um, I have no issues with those yeah. episodes at all. And, and I think too, is I think it's kind of cool on some trips to show that aspect. Uh, I think we were talking about earlier in one of the earlier podcasts is show the aspect of you might be in a camp with your family and friends, but this person doesn't hunt as hard as you do. So you go out on your own or this person, it might be your dad who's older and doesn't, 
you know, you run into all those things where you have all the intention of going out in a group, but you're out there on the mountain by yourself every right. day. Um, so it could have been one of those things, but I decided since my dad was there, um, might as well just do it for this Under Armour thing because it that actually works better when there's more people because you have someone to interact with and it just comes across better. Interaction makes for better entertainment, yeah. better TV, really. I mean, yeah, just... and I thought, okay, this is really cool because my dad had a great hunt there. Now it's my turn to have the tag there. And he, he also has a tag. Um, so the hunt was really awesome. We flew into a little bit different area than we did last time, but we're still kind of able to hunt that same place. And the only downside was the caribou really weren't where we were. They're within camp area, huntable distance right from camp. It was probably a four plus mile walk to where the caribou were, which doesn't sound that bad, but when you've got a big, it looks, if you look at the pictures or whatever, you think this is flat, but I think it was it uh, my dad or someone put on their GPS and, and logged the up and down, and I think it was 2,500 vertical feet climbed, which really? at the yeah. end of the day, if you go 13 plus miles and 2,500 feet of elevation, that's a long day of hunting because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you're just going four and a half miles to get to where the animals are. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was the only... Why, why didn't you spike out or anything like that? Well, did it just not make sense? Two reasons. Sometimes it's just easier. I feel like it, when I'm hunting, I always debate, okay, should we spike out or not? Well, one reason we had a guy with a bunch of camera equipment with us. Right. The second reason was by the time you carry all your stuff there, then you have to carry your stuff plus a caribou. So at some point during the trip, you're going to have to, it's almost just easier just to go there and then come back. Right. That is if you can kill it on the first day that you go there. Correct. But if you're it's going a, back it, and forth it, and back exactly, and forth. Exactly. That's it is if you go there. But we didn't know where the caribou were, so mm-hmm. you don't want to go all the way over there with all your stuff and be nothing there. Right. So it's more of a scouting mission. But the weather has been pretty unse- pretty wet in Alaska this year. It's Alaska. Is there yeah. anything that's no, unseasonable? It's, it's, just, it's, just, it's typical Alaska weather. Yeah. So a lot of the days were completely fogged in, no visibility. So to hike all the way over there and then not really be able to see anything, you, you just, it's a gamble. So the first day we, we did our hunt, we went over there, we found some big bulls. The next day it was pretty much completely socked in. We were in a tent for an entire day or maybe it was the third day. I can't even remember the days all run together, but anyways, it was fairly, I, I did get on a caribou one of the days, uh, the, f- the second day, I think it was, yeah, the first day we didn't really see anything. Second day we got in on a group of big bulls, really big bulls. And I was telling my dad, just shoot one with a rifle. He's like, no, I'm not going to shoot one. Did, was he bow on or did no, he, he just have a rifle? He had a rifle. Yeah. Um, but he was more interested in watching me get one than wow. him shooting one. And, uh, which is cool. Yeah, that's just how he yeah, is. He's Dan's that kind of stud. guy. He's yeah. a stud. And so we went up there. It was a pretty good, um, you know, pretty good stock, but there's a little bit of miscommunication, and the guy that was filming us had the tripod up, and I was I was out of sight creeping in. I was, sick, you know, I think it was 80 yards, and then I crawled the 60, 50, somewhere in there, getting ready to get up and just waiting for him to cross so it'd be in his frame and where I am. And then they spooked out and I think they'd seen the tripod and everything up behind there. And that's people think, Oh, when you get so used to filming yourself, actually mm-hmm. having someone else film you is a lot harder. Yeah. You don't I, know what's going on you back don't there know. at all. And, and it's not, it's just one of the things that happens. Carrying cameras allows a lot of animals to live longer than their <laughs> life expectancy. It's not a quiet endeavor. No, it's not easy yeah. whether you're doing it yourself or even having someone with you. And it depends on – because you're kind of dependent on the skill of the person behind you. So if this is their first that type of hunt, spot and stock hunt or mountain type hunt or whatever, then, you know, you're dependent on that. Now, he did a really good job, and I was you – know, especially for a first trip like mm-hmm. that. But there's little things that I would do different or you would do different that just come with experience. Right. Um, 
So, yeah, that's... There's challenges with any time you're trying to film it, whether you're doing yeah. it on your own or you got a camera crew or even a spotter or anything else. Like, it's the situation's always There's more difficult. There's always challenges. When you've got... More, I think it's, like, harder when you got more people. Like, I think it's yes. easier by myself than it is with somebody else. For one, it's like you're thinking for yourself and you just make the decisions. And so whether it's right or wrong, something a decision's made. Sometimes when you've got other people, you're like, well, what do you think? Or I want to do this or... Or you say, let's go do this. And they're like, nah, I don't think that's going to work. And then there's like that, that drama communication. Yeah. But then just having a cameraman, I mean, he's, he's, he's got a hard job too because he's got to watch the animal and he's got to watch you where you're at. So he's got to make sure that he doesn't move when the animal's looking, but he's also got to keep track of you. Yeah. So they've got a pretty tough job back and forth as well. So, you know, you can't, you can't just say, oh, the cameraman's got it easy or hunting with filming a hunt with a cameraman is easy because it's. It's probably not. It's yeah. been, I don't know how many years it's been since I had a cameraman. It's been a long time, but. Yeah, it's it's never easy. So you throw in that, especially with a bow. A bow is not, spot and stock bow hunting is not really designed for filming. Yeah. It's just, it's just not. It's not, it makes it that much more difficult and that much more frustrating because you may only get that one chance. And if something happens, you know. Aren't you hunting high fenced animals and penned yeah, animals exactly. and everything? I mean, it should no. be easy, guy. Okay? Just walk in there, definitely crawl not. out of bed, and I, I, I even have probably think that <laughs> that probably wouldn't be that easy. Still, no, I don't know. I wouldn't know. But no. um, I think uh, the hunt really went pretty well. I ended up with a good caribou that just happened to work out. Was it on the same day as that, or did you guys no, have to go was back two and days? Come back out? Yeah, so. I guess on the third or fourth day, I can't remember, but because um, the weather really had you weather, guys pinned, we for were quite pinned a while. for. There was a few times where it was. I think maybe it was the next. Maybe it was the next day. So it was either the third or fourth day. Um, we wake up. It's completely socked in. You can't see five feet in front of you, and it's raining. There's just no point. You're gonna just go for a, a long. 20 mile hike when you can't see no yeah. i mean it's just it's pointless so we stayed in the tent for most of it but i'm pretty impatient i can't just it's like uncomfortable so i uh would go out a it's lot uncomfortable just, being patient yeah is that what you said exactly um so i would go out and there was one wave where it cleared just like at a ceiling where i could see a little hole across the valley and it just so happens i spotted caribou bedded maybe three miles away and so I perfect so we go over there do our stock and everything had moved back in but I'm pretty good at navigating so I figured out where we were at uh got in there and as luck would have it he was asleep dead asleep really that's the first time I've ever really snuck like just up laid that. out head down head down everything. just Done. completely sleep back quartering away from us and I'm just, there's, I was like, thank you, God. This, is, <laughs> this just doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. And a perfect little hide for uh, the guy who was filming. And so I got in at 50 and thinking, yeah, that's cl- close. I could shoot him here. I could even shoot him while he was laying down the mm-hmm. way he was laying. But it was a little bit awkward. And I was thinking, I don't really want to mess this up. I'll get a little closer. So I got to 40 and thinking, well, he's still asleep. And then I started thinking, well, if he hears something, he's going to jump up and run away. So then I'm like, I better get to 30. And then I get to 30, and I'm like, I'll just get to 20. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Might as well push but your luck. my thought was, once I was at 30, I thought, man, if he hears something, I mean, drawing in. back, he's gone just going to anyway. run. But if I'm at 20 yards, I can still probably shoot him. And that's what ended up happening. He jumped up, hauled off. But I, I think but when I shot him, he was like, all I had to do is really point my bow at him. I mean, yeah. he was close. I don't know how close, but the video is pretty cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So, and then he died within ten feet of where I shot. You know, nice. I just sat down and he just tipped over right there. It was cool. And then we packed him out. It took us a couple of days to pack him out. And then the weather. There was one clear day of weather, and my dad was thinking he had to come back for uh, some stuff. And if we stayed, we may or may not have gotten out on time. And he's like, I've already shot a caribou. So he, my dad guided me in the whole time with hand signals cool. and everything. Yeah. And that's really helped. And he was watching the whole time. He was more excited than I was almost. I was pretty excited, yeah. but he was yeah. just uh, pumped. 
Yeah. That's awesome. And then you filmed that for Ridge Reaper episode. Yeah. I don't really know what's going to be done with it. It might be a Ridge Reaper episode. It might be, I think they want to do like a special Father's Day thing. So yeah. Father's Day, you'll probably see a really cool video. And then some stuff's going to start coming out with it pretty soon. I'm not yeah. really sure what. Cool. But, Whatever they um, have in, in Yeah. Line. It wasn't really a Ridge Reaper episode, but maybe just some, some other stuff, some little tips and other things too. Yeah. Which, I think they're kind of evolving some of the stuff that they're doing. You yeah. Yeah. Getting more more value out of out of one asset rather than just one video, you yep. know, one episode. So I think I think it'll be cool. I mean, it was a fun experience. It was cool to have my dad there, and and we had a great time. And you know, it was awesome. I got a caribou with my bow, and it was a really nice caribou. I'm gonna mount yeah, it, it put was. him in here somewhere. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Nice. Speaking of here, where are we? This is your new dungeon. Yeah, this is the new man cave because I got <laughs> kicked out of the other one. I think maybe I'll get kicked okay. out of mine. The and funny thing is, this was a dog kennel. This was? This was oh, a yeah. dog kennel. So I just remodeled the dog kennel. So if I get in trouble with the missus, you literally I'm, I'm literally going to the dog house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, it was a pretty sweet dog kennel. It's yeah. like, yeah, I, I think with a little bit of, I could polish this. No, nah, it's great. It's way better than my office. My problem is I've got I've got a nice office space, but I have so much crap crammed into there that I feel unorganized all the time. Yeah. And it's like and I'm so busy just keeping up with day to day that I have no time to well, I I say no time. I guess I could wake up at three in the morning like I did this morning and get something done, but like I wanna deck it all out and make just make it mine, make yeah. it home. I just don't. It's just tough. Bad. It's tough to find the time because you get – that's the trouble. You go on these trips and you get home and you have work you have to do. But you also – like for me, I also have moving and yeah. real life stuff. And then you got to go back and when you're working – or at least for my – when I'm working, I'm either guiding or filming or hunting. I can't do any other thing. Yeah. So it just backs up. I can't answer emails. I can't do what I – anything. So you just – you end up backing up and then, you know, finding the time right – like today, I've got an article that's now ten days overdue for Western Hunter. Might not be going to get that one published, right? It, oh, I hope. <laughs> no. I think. I mean, I'm gonna as soon as this is over, sit down and just crank out yeah. that article, and then do some editing and some other stuff. So, and then I gotta load up my truck and head up to Montana. Yeah, I think that a lot of people need to know that we do a lot more stuff than just go on these hunts. You oh know, yeah, there's way more going on um, than what people see. That's hopefully what some of this podcast stuff will do is re- reveal a little bit of that. But at the same time, it just added one more thing onto the plate to have to do or to do, you know, another project. But um, I enjoy it. So. Yeah, it's cool. All right. Good. Thanks, Remy. Appreciate it. Yep. That's good time. Good time. Now what? You want to do the next one? Might as well. All right. Um I kind of want to go take a leak outside real quick. Should we hit stop on everything? Yeah, hit and then it's, it's separate. You gotta have a story. No, forget the story. Everybody's doing something. We'll do nothing. They say, what's your show about? I say nothing. There you go. It's about nothing. I think you may have something here. <laughs>